Welcome to my review of the third One Piece movie entitled Chopper's Kingdom of Strange Animals. First of all, I'd like to say this is a fun movie and just that. It is not a movie you should try to make sense of. I'm not really going to do that in my review. I'm just going to give my thoughts on certain things that happen. But the reason it's all just a fun movie and not something you should take seriously is mainly that you can't fit it in the timeline anywhere and it just doesn't make any sense if you try to make sense of it. Because Chopper is a member of the crew, yes, but BB is not there, and neither is Robin. So, and Robin joined almost basically immediately after the Alabasta arc ended. So there was no point this movie could have taken place. Nami did not yet have her climb attack, though she could have switched back to it due to the fact that it was originally designed to do party tricks. This movie was really supposed to be about Chopper, and I think that was where it messed up. Chopper had not had enough time to develop as a character, and the movie, the icon depth, wasn't really that interesting, because you know how it's going to end. Like, they're putting him in a situation that you know how it's going to end. The whole time, the people are asking him, like, please stay and be our king, please stay and be our king. And he's like, no, and you know he's never going to stay yet. You know that, whether or not, even if you had had not watched the whole series like I had, even if you were not completely caught up, even if you were watching this, and you, as you were catching up to One Piece, you would still know, because it's a movie, you would know Chopper wasn't going to, like, leave the crew. And they tried to play it off like he may, like his allegiance was like dwindling or like he was considering it. But no, 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 no. I hate it when movies try to get you to think something that will never happen. Like, I hate it when they try. It's supposed to be entertaining. But like, we know nobody's going to die. We know these things. So don't act like it's going to happen. Okay, so another thing that uh, kind of annoyed me was, so Loro fight. They put Zoro up against a guy that claims to have the world's strongest kick. And Sanji up against a guy that uses a sword. Now, normally I would not mind. Normally I'd be happy of Sanji being up against a sword user. But the concept of putting Sanji up against a guy that said he uses the world's strongest kick. It's just kind of like, why would you pass that opportunity up? And secondly, his kicks didn't really look that impressive. Even Zoro, who does not really like Sanji very much, commented that he has a friend or he knows somebody that has much more powerful kicks than this guy, and he's a pain in the ass. But he still does know a guy that has a lot stronger kicks. And that was just leaving me there like, wow, is this guy that little, is that not impressive? I guess maybe the good thing Tanji didn't fire them because it would have been a letdown. Now, so far out of the three One Piece movies I have reviewed, this is the best one. It is the most One Piece movie. It feels like I'm watching One Piece. Not completely, but you can tell they're getting a hang on how to really write to these characters. I mean, there were a couple moments that got old. Like, they made Luffy really stupid in this. I still need to point that out. Luffy was super dumb in this. Like, dumber than normal. Like, almost to the point. You have that line, but then a joke. Maybe he mentally retarded. In this movie, part of me was like, is Luffy really mentally retarded? Because he seemed like him in this. Like, he didn't seem to understand anything that was going on for a majority of the movie. Luffy is stupid, but he's not that stupid. The villain in this movie is boring. I'm going to be honest, he's boring, he's not interesting, he's literally there just to be a villain. I've noticed that with a lot of these early One Piece movies. The villain is just there to be a villain, and that's what this guy is there for. His henchmen are guests are somewhat interesting. The only part of the movie where the villain actually interests me at all, like, where I was looking at him, I was like, I wonder where they're going with this idea, where he said he would give the Straw Hats the information they wanted, but Nami needed to become his henchmen, and 
I get it, it was supposed to be funny, but that was a little bit interesting. It was nice to see some kind of characterization from him. Like, you know, he, he specifically showed Nami. He knows nothing about her navigational skills. It was nice to see him be like, oh, look, hot woman. Like, that was all that was all it was. Nami was hot, so he wanted her to be a tenthman. I mean, or something like that, I guess. That was a little bit interesting, but he wasn't interesting. The main villain of this movie was not interesting. And that's where my big gripe comes in as well, which is his henchmen. His henchmen were not there to be his henchmen. They were literally more stereotypical henchmen than some of the ones in some of the Dragon Ball movies. They had, like, sort of had personality. They had, like, quirks, like gags. But those gags made up the entirety of the character. Like, one of them would, like, have the strongest kicks. That was it. He had strong kicks, and they rang with that. One of them was handsome, and they rang with that. And it just, I did not like that. Then, of course, there was the kid. That seemed to be a theme in these early One Piece movies, that the Straw Hats are always helping some kid, and it's getting kind of annoying, because they're all kind of the same. They really are. They're useless, and they don't really like fighting, and Luffy inspired them to become stronger or follow their dream, or something like that. And they learn, they all need to learn something, and they learn it from Luffy. And that's really it. The character, the kids, I don't like it. I know it will end pretty soon, I'm assuming. They're gonna stop doing it, because obviously that would get old eventually. The last thing I want to talk about is the fight scene, the final fight. Luffy versus stereotypical villain guy, who is so stereotypical, I couldn't even remember his name. There was like nothing to him. He was boring and bland. Um, yeah, the final fight, in my opinion, was a letdown. It was like two, three minutes. Then it got interrupted. Chopper fought the guy a little bit with the help of the kid. Mobambi, I think his name is. Yeah, so the kid and Chopper fought him off a bit. The kid learned his lesson and apparently found out that his the kid. Uh, the main villain had killed his dad. I mean, though, the fight was interrupted by all of that. Then Luffy come back in, they fight briefly, and then Luffy wins. He won within like two minutes. It was a very lackluster final fight. Kind of a letdown. Even though there wasn't even much build up to it. The so half of the time I was like, is Chopper gonna fight the villain? Is Luffy even gonna fight the final villain? Like, there was not even a lot of build-up to Luffy fighting this guy. That I did like. It had me questioning whether or not Luffy would fight the main villain. But I just knew in my head. I was like, of course Luffy will fight the main villain. Oh, by the way, the main villain, when he eats the treasure from the king, he transforms into something. Like, some kind of Zoan Zelda fruit user, but he isn't. It's really weird. And I think he has a devil. I mean, this guy can eat horns. So I'm going to, uh, he can eat bones. So I'm going to assume he has a devil fruit. But then again, we never find out if he does have one. So I, I don't know. I mean, this movie has a, just has left me very confused a lot of the time. Maybe I'm stupid, but it left me very confused half the time. So what are my final thoughts on the movie? Well, I think it is one of those movies that is worth sitting down turning your brain off, eating some popcorn, and just enjoying. It's a nice, fun little movie that you can enjoy if you turn your brain off and just don't really think about it. I mean, I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed the previous two movies, but that's not saying much. I did not enjoy those. Those were very boring. This was definitely a step up, definitely more enjoyable, definitely something you just sit down, turn your brain off, and just watch for fun. So, yeah, if you had not seen it and you're having a lazy day when you're just chilling at home, turn it on and give it a watch. It's a decent movie, fun to watch, not fun to think about, though. Tell me your thoughts on the movie if you've seen it in the comment section down below. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more One Piece movie reviews. I am going to be reviewing every One Piece movie up until Film Gold, and then... When I see Film Gold, I will review that. But above all else, guys, have a great day, and this is One Piece Nation, signing out.